Hey, what's up, guys? So, here's part two of Storytelling Thursday. I'm your host, Team Hard Life Captain Albert Sertici. All right, so now with all these jacks in play, a lot of people catch them by slide line. Well, this was about 10, maybe 12 years ago. started slide lining it was very early in the season the water temperature wasn't even right or anything for it but guys are like oh you ain't gonna catch that you're wasting your time this and that and I just you know, smile you know because I don't care I'm out there gonna fish I'm gonna try something if that ain't working I'm gonna try something else if that ain't working I'll throw bubble gum on the hook I don't care I'm gonna try something different and I guess that is truly is what made me successful and is that I'm not afraid to try something now, if I've already tried it and it don't work and it don't work and it don't work, then I don't keep trying it. So, on this day, I was up on the left side of the tee. When you walk out to the end, I went to the left side. It was real calm waters and everybody was just bottom fishing. I'd throw out some slides and, you know, the, the older salts were telling me that you ain't going to catch you, ain't going to catch you. I kind of like being told that because when, when they do that, it's it just like, it lights that fire and the fish just, they come, they come. Well, that day the water wasn't glass, but it was smooth. There wasn't no ripples. It was almost a reflection, but real smooth water, as far as the eye can see. So I'm looking out the Packy Channel, and I start seeing these ripples across the water. And if you ever seen when you're out on calm waters and the rain hits, that ripple effect it makes, and you can see as the water is getting closer and closer. Well, that's what it looked like, but there was no. There was no rain clouds. There was nothing coming down. Like, you could see the rain coming down if it was. And so me and another guy, I can't remember the, the name of him, good buddy of mine, but I'm horrible with names. If you haven't met me yet, I'm extremely bad with names. I'm trying to improve that by remembering everybody's name. But, yeah. Anyways, so we're out there fishing, and uh, he's, he goes bottom fishing, and he goes, yeah, I, I want to throw a slide. Too. I said, throw one out. I said, you know, it's... What harm could it do? They're not catching on bottom. They're not, you know, catching on the big rigs. So it's going to put some slides up. So it goes, all right, so he does. And by then I already had my own bait because there was bait at the pier and we caught some and I put in my live bait well. We get our slides out. I had, it was three or four slides and this is way back when, when you could pay the extra amount of money to get your extra rods in there. So what I would end up doing was I would have my four rod limit and I would pay for four people to get on the pier. Because a lot of times my friends would show up that didn't have rods, so I'd put them on rods. They were free to get on, free to fish. I mean, all they had to do was have their license. So what better way to go hang out with your boys, right? Don't forget the beer next time. So, <laughs> Well, we're off the left side. We're sliding out baits. We're sitting there. And we see these ripples, and it's just coming. And it's as far as the eye can see from right to the left. And I'm looking at him as I, you know... We're thinking of like maybe it's wind coming in or northern, but how can it be if it was coming straight at us this way? So we're sitting there, and then we could see movement in the water, like underneath the ripples coming this way. And I was like, look, I said, that looks like Bonita. And then, boom, first, came, first rod goes down, second rod goes down, third rod, his rod goes down, and we're hooked up like four fish like that. So reels are screaming. I, I go to the first one. I pick it up. We start fighting it. It was like a Bonita. And then it was Spanish, and then it was a king, and then it was Benin, and then it was, and it was just fish after fish after fish after fish, and I had to do it. I had to look back at the guy, and I was just like, ain't gonna catch nothing. Sitting there hooked up, hooked up. It got to the point that we were sliding baits out. We ran out of our live bait. I actually picked up a dry dead bait off the floor. I hooked it up, and as I was sliding out, I'm shaking my anchor rod to let my leader rod line go down kingfish comes completely out of the water and nails it about four to five feet out of the water before it even hits the water so it's on it's hooked up and me and the guy we are smoking the fish i mean we're catching big big spanish kingfish and bonita i think i end up with like eight bonita nine bonita something like that 
I got my limit of my two kings, and then I got a whole bunch of Spanish, which took me up to my limit. Well, looking at them, I was thinking, I was like, man, these are some big Spanish mackerel. And God's like, yeah. And I was like, you know what? I wonder what the state record is. So I pulled it up, and it's like 11 pounds or something like that. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to stop by Roy's, and I'm going to check it out and see what it is. So I was like, hey, man, can you weigh out this, this catch for me? And Roy, or Rocky's like, yeah, let me check it out. So he puts it on the scale, and he's like, dude, he's like, you just busted the state record for Spanish mackerel. He's like, but I'll charge you, you know, I think it was $25 for the paperwork or something like that to file it to, to see what they're saying. Or he says, or you can go to Texas A&M and go file it for a state record there. And I was like, all right, cool, you know, I'll do that. And uh, so I go back over there and all of my Spanish were in that range, you know, 10 to 14 pounds, every single one of them. All the little ones I was just throwing back. So I get over there. And for some reason, something about it told me to drop off all my fish just in case they wanted to keep them, keep the two bigger ones to verify or whatever. I went home and I dropped off all my fish. I get over there and I got the two Spanish with me. So I walk in there before I get the fish and uh, I let them know what's going on. They're like, oh, okay, yeah, bring them down off your vehicle. We'll, we'll check it out. Well, at this time is when I learned that the game warden office was there at the same time. And I was like, all right, cool, you know, that's cool. So I go down and they hear that there's a possible state record pending or that there could be one. So they all come out of the offices and come downstairs. And I pull them out and I lay them on the floor and the game warden's like, all right, that's cool, that's cool. And then Bob just comes up and he goes, oh, nope, those are juvenile kingfish. And I was like, the what? I said, they got spots and he goes, no, he saw uh, those are juvenile kingfish. And he pulls out a picture and he shows me the lateral line on the kingfish compared to the Spanish mackerel. In the picture, you will see the lateral line, how it moves. That is a very important indicator if you're going to be getting into kingfishing that you be able to tell the difference between a king mackerel and a Spanish mackerel. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because at that time, we all thought it was a Spanish mackerel. Even the game wardens did. Comes out, it was a king mackerel, juvenile, still within the legal catch, because it only had to be like 24 inches or something like that, and I was at like at, right at 26 or something like that. After they point that out, they go, well, did you catch any more? And I said, no, I said, these are the only two I caught. Because at that point, I, I had to look at what I did, you know, I was misidentifying these fish as the wrong one. And I, I'll tell you what, I was really afraid that I was gonna get nailed. All right, so with me, I follow the rules as much as possible, always. And bringing up my kids, I've always taught them to follow the rules. Now, I was stuck in a spot that, by me misidentifying these fish, you can't play the I didn't know thing at certain times, you know. This could have been one of them, so it really scared me that I, I now knew in my head I don't have just my 10 Spanish and my two kings. I could possibly have 12 kingfish in my cooler at the house. And I was like, man, that would be a huge fine for them to, to know that. And I was like, man, I, said, I, I can't do that. I can't afford to have that hit or take a chance that they wouldn't understand where I was coming from. Even though at first they thought the same thing, they thought that was a Spanish. And all, you know, all the game wardens got class, schooled by the biologists as well as I. And as soon as I learned about all of that, I went back to Bob Hall Pier and the next fishing trip and I started telling everybody over there, hey man, this is what's going on, this is what's happening, this is how you properly identify. And at first they thought I was crazy. They are like, no, no. And I was like, look, man, I said, you can do what you want. I'm telling you what I've learned. You know, I can't control what you do after that. But it would have been a very, very expensive lesson to learn if they didn't heed my words. Because like I said, I could have almost gotten popped. You know, Rocky over at Roy's didn't know. I didn't know. The game wardens didn't know until the marine biologists came out there and showed that to us. So... The main reason I'm doing this video is so that way you guys don't fall into that same thing because knowledge gets passed on and so these loopholes will disappear. 
especially because a lot of times ignorance is not an excuse. I was, I was, I was there. I was in those shoes where I had to learn, and I got very, very lucky that I didn't have all those extra, or they didn't do an investigation even further. So from that point on, anybody I see catching any kind of king, I pick share the knowledge. Well, at least now with the YouTube channel, I can share my knowledge beforehand and hopefully save y'all a lot of pain and hurt and especially onto that wallet and or, you know, you know, protect our species of fish and so forth. Because at the same time, that's why rules and regs are set. So yes, that was one of my encounters that have, could have gone very, very badly had things not gone the way they did. So, again, like I said, I just wanted to share that info with y'all guys and how I learned about the difference between kingfish and Spanish mackerel while Jack Cravel fishing. <laughs> Technically, it was originally kingfishing, but when the season's right, there won't be no kings. You'll hit a lot of jackfish. So for me, I was going for jacks today, caught this, and that's how I learned. So, all right, guys, y'all have a good one. And again, our 2,500 subscriber mark is coming. So if y'all haven't subscribed to the channel, you need to subscribe. You need to watch the video so you can learn how we're going to do our next giveaway. And it's coming. I think y'all going to like it because we might have one to two sponsors come in on this one. Don't know just yet. So y'all have a good one.